Uh, my name is Malcolm Gay. I'm an arts writer at The Globe. And I'm thrilled to be here today to discuss AI and its role in the arts with acclaimed director Diane Paulus. Uh, you may know Diane as the artistic director and Tony Award winning uh, artistic director of American Repertory Theater at Harvard. Uh, but Diane straddles many worlds. Uh, she's always been very, very interested in technology and the future, and a lot of her work has been geared toward the future. Now she's thinking deeply about AI and its, and its role in the arts and its effect on artistic practice. Uh, so, Diane, welcome, first off. Thank you. Delighted to be here. Yeah. Hi, everyone. All right. There we go. To everyone online, too, wherever you are. Absolutely. <laughs> Technology and <laughs> So, obviously, this is a huge subject, so let's dive in. And I have to admit that when thinking about AI and its role in the arts, um, theater's not the first place I think, right? Um, you've been thinking a lot about kind of how theater, how you can innovate within theater and what roles that other technologies can play. So can you just talk to us at first just about how you're thinking about how AI may be, how you can harness AI within the arts and the role it will play? Mm. So yes, this is a huge topic. And I, I think more than anything, what I feel where I sit as an artist, a practicing director, and a producer at, at ART is AI is here. Right. It's happening. It's happening fast. And for all my colleagues who work in AI, they always do this with their fingers. They're like, it's going like this. <laughs> it's just going to exponentially uh, develop faster than we think. So um, I, I think the mission of the American Repertory Theater is to expand the boundaries of theater. That was the mission I inherited when I first came here 15 years ago. And I loved that mission mm -hmm. because I, I've always felt uh, interested in the next practice as opposed to the best practice. You know, what, what is coming? How do we have to pivot? How does theater stay relevant? How do the arts maximize their impact? Right. in the world we're living in today. Um, and that doesn't mean that we are, we're not often looking backwards to history to understand the role of the arts at different moments at cultural, cultural impact, like Elizabethan England or fifth century Athens. I, I love looking backwards as mm. much as looking forwards. I just want to say that. Uh, but I think, I think like anything, what, what this moment with AI is going to do, it's going to put into relief what the arts actually can singularly do, right? Mm. So uh, we went through this in the theater uh, with the advent of TV and film. And that, that was always, uh, for me, a, a, a big moment of understanding realism and naturalism was radical in theater at the turn of the 20th century. This idea that we were gonna be invisible and peer through the fourth wall and see life happening. That was a big departure in the theater form. With the advent of TV and, TV and film, it, it has now felt to me as a theater artist, that's not really what I'm interested in theater for. I'm interested in theater that actually acknowledges the audience, that breaks the fourth wall, that really makes um, a point of saying we're all here together. You have all come out of isolation to be in community together, and that's what makes the theater theater. Mm -hmm. So I think this moment of AI is gonna make us ask yet again, what is the power of the arts? And because I'm here to talk about theater in particular, it's really made me understand ever more intensely what is theater. Mm. And really, just to touch on that, theater is actually about the transmission between the audience and the performer. It, it takes place in this space between which is something that AI has nothing to do with, right? So AI may be able to help us do research, and I've worked with many theatrical designers who already show me research, and I look at it and I say, wow, that's amazing. Where'd you get that? And they said, you know, um, sorry, mid-journey, am I getting that right? Someone knows, uh, you know, all the different programs. Right. Um, is that right? I'm getting it right, yeah. So um, research, um, and I think, like many of us, we've all played on ChatGBT, and I've said, you know, create a marketing plan for the American Rep Repertory Theaters next season, and like, in 30 <laughs> seconds, it comes out, you know. So AI can generate um, information, research, a first pass, yep. but it's not the experience of theater. Mm -hmm. The experience of theater is actually um, 
a vibrational, ephemeral, it's by, by definition, it's ephemeral, and it changes every time you do it. It, it. it changes based on, I always say, the rotation, the rotation of the earth, the air we're breathing, what we did yesterday is different today. And actually, that's the beauty of theater versus film, which is caught, which is then replayed, and you know, it's, it's a funny thing, many filmmakers, um, will say to theater artists, I wish I could be in your field. And many theater artists say, I wish I could be in your field because you get it once on tape and then you've got it. I wish I could be in that medium. And then filmmakers say, well, you get to change it. You get to change it. And we have to go back in the editing room and splice it up if we want to change it. So I think this idea of the eternal presence of theater and it being impacted um, by audience and it actually only existing in the space between, mm. which is, is to me the spiritual side of theater, which is the ritual part of theater. And that to me is essentially different from what AI is contributing to our work. So is it impacting our work? Is it entering the process? For sure. Right. I, I'm seeing it constantly, but even with my designers, and I say, that looks fantastic. Did AI just make that for you? They say, no, we had to go back and forth many, many, many times mm -hmm. to, to tell the computer what to change, different ideas. Um, but then that's a two-dimensional image on a screen and how you then put that in space, how actors interact with it, how um, you make it work with text, with choreography, with light, that is all Right. Something that AI is not going to, um, I feel, pose an existential threat about. So one of the things you mentioned was that people will, you know, people you're working with will come up with a, a variety of designs, and they're like, "Oh, I just plug this into ChatGPT and this, that, and the other thing." Um, one question, though, is if you know, there's no question that that can accelerate the creative process. You can get drafts kind of that you can then tinker with and things like that. But does that affect the creative process? I mean, there's that blank page moment, that moment sure. of, of original inspiration. And if you're going to a computer program or a, or a, or a neural network to, to get there, how is that going to affect creativity? And how is, how is that generative moment of, of the initial idea being affected? You know, I, uh, the idea of the blank page for me as a director doesn't quite resonate. Yeah. Because for me, it's never a blank page. And I always tell young artists, go live your life, because the more you live your life, the better artist you're going to be. You're drawing on everything that you're experiencing, your reading, your, your interactions, your mistakes, your failures, your learnings, sure. all of that is bringing, bringing material forward, right, for your artistic creation. Um, so I, I think where AI will be helpful is it will, I think in the best possible way, reserve your brain space for actually what is truly the creative moment. And I, I'll, I'll just share an anecdote. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, in 2011, I directed um, an opera by the composer Todd Macover, who works at the MIT Media Lab, with robots. And uh, I was working with Carol Armitage, the choreographer, and we had robots. And the, and the dream was they were going to be socially autonomous robots. In the end, they weren't. They were basically programmed. And it was like Radio Shack. You know, they were, they were being driven by people off stage. Um, but Carol had choreographed them and programmed them. And it, the, the theme of the show was all about technology and the future. But I will never forget the moment. I sat in the rehearsal. Carol and I were in the, in the theater audience. And we were watching a rehearsal. And all of a sudden, the robot started to do something that it had not been programmed to do. <laughs> it, it, it was freaking out. And it was spinning and turning. And, jetting, and the young MIT students who were on the show ran out with their screwdrivers. We're so sorry. We're going to fix it. You know, they got down and they were <laughs> trying to fix it. And both Carol and I were like, no, that's what we want. You know, let's do that again. So I think as a creative person, um, we're always actually trying to stay awake and open to the accident, the surprise, the unknown. That's actually our job. So we can feed the computer, chat GPT, and we can get a lot of stimulus. Mm -hmm. But actually the artistic moment, the creative moment, the innovative moment is always for me tied with the unexpected. Right and the unknowable, and something that you're not predicting. 
So I think the limits of AI are it's, 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 it's mimicking, it's answering prompts. And really, you know, I'm sure um, there are many people listening who are saying, yes, but we will teach AI how to do that, how to create the unexpected and the accident and the surprise. Um, but that, that, and that is, we can't, but it's also, those are of the moment. Those are based on emotions. Mm -hmm. Those are based on um, intuition, right? So, you know, I, I've known now enough being a, a, a working artist for many years that whenever I'm blocked or stuck, I, I go out and I start moving. Literally, I just start walking or running. And it always happens. I can sit at my desk and I sit there and I'm like, how am I going to fix this? And then I just leave it and I go walking and then somewhere in the walk, I don't know where it comes from. It's like a vision comes of an answer of how to start the show, how to rearrange that piece of music, a new idea. So where are those coming from? Those are coming from you know, a visceral stimulus, uh, synapses that are happening that are memory bank, that are emotional, that are related to breathing. Um, so they're not, they're not just a two-dimensional interface with a piece of technology. Right, right. Well, ob obviously, artists have had an ambivalent relationship with technology for a very long time. Um, looking at photography, you know, people thought that that was going to be the end of painting, and what it actually became was an artwork, under, you know, an art form unto itself. Right. Uh, and also pushed, pushed the idea of what it is to be an artist into a much broader realm. Mm. I mean, how do you, how do you see uh, AI affecting kind of the the mode of production and, and kind of how do you think it's going to actually force how we think about art to expand? I think there'll be um, certainly, which is you know what the writers are striking about right now. Um, there'll be implications for certain uh, jobs. I mean, with this designer I worked with, he didn't hire a design assistant to do the research. He went to an AI program, right? So that, that's going to happen. Um, and we're going to have to face that, I think, across multiple um, businesses, industries, and fields. Uh, what I think uh, where, where art actually is going to play a role is in determining um, how we're using the AI. So I, when I think about art and AI, I think, uh, it's, it's not posing an existential threat to our existence. We're always going to need artists. The theater will not be replaced by AI and robots yet. <laughs> um, but the theater and art is going to have an important role to play in reflecting on how we're using and thinking about AI and technology. Right. Right, so we are planning a new building on the Harvard campus, a center for creativity that will be our new home in Alston. So we're crossing the river, we're gonna be in Alston, and we're in deep conversation with the School of Engineering because the dean uh, at the School of Engineering told me the number one issue facing his faculty are ethics. It's ethics across um, AI, across computer technology, um, across all their different fields of um, study. And then the next partner across the rivers is HBS. And the dean there told me the number one issue they're facing are ethics, how all these technologies are being brought to market. And they both turned to me and said, well, what can art do to help us understand how we deal with these ethical issues? Right. So we have amazing people who are thinking about the ethical ramifications of AI, like I just want to mention the Algorithmic Justice League, which is an amazing organization that is really thinking about um, you know, how, how AI is creating content and, you know, what it's creating and the implicit bias in all of the programming. Um, but I think artists, filmmakers, poets, uh, theater writers, directors, we're going to be charged with really understanding what is humanity, what does it mean to be human, how do we live inside this technology? What are we prioritizing? And the stories we tell around that. So sometimes I feel like let's pivot the conversationists to really embrace the role of the artist, which I feel has always been the role of the artist, is to interpret and help us understand the issues that we're facing as human beings. And, and no question, technology is, is here and it will be the, you know, the single most pressing issue of how we continue to function as a society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing 
you know, as, as the writer strike illustrates, as some of these lawsuits illustrate, um, people are really worried about jobs. Mm -hmm. And these are people that have families and, you know, I mean, it's, it's very important stuff. And, and there are whole industries that are going to be upended. Um, I guess the bigger question is, not the bigger question, but another question within that is, is AI able to be creative? in a way, I mean, you've been talking about this kind of sacred space of theater and how there's this generative moment that comes deep within you. Does AI have that ability or is it always going to be kind of rearranging and iter you know, kind of iterative of, of previous inputs? Well, I think according to my friends who work in technology, the, the, this gesture means that might happen very quickly. <laughs> um, but I think, I think right now, there is no AI that's just working on its own, right? There, there is a human touch to all AI. And AI right now, and I think for most of us who, who, who deal with chat GBT as a form of AI, we are inputting into it. So it's, it's, it's reactive. Uh, so I think this, this notion of what really is creativity, it's very good at, no question, you can, and I'm sure everyone's, done this or played versions of create a song in the style of Justin Bieber and Lady Gaga on the subject of the climate crisis. If you put that in, it will give you right. a song because it's drawing from everything it knows out there. Um, but will that song, you know, really uh, hit all the creative Un, unnameable things that great art does, right? Surprise us in, 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 and pull things together in ways that we wouldn't have anticipated. It's doing, it's knowledge-based, is based on what it knows, mm. right? So I think art is always, um, I think why we need artists in the world, and frankly why I'm so interested in science fiction as a form, is that we actually have to not think about what we know, but imagine things we don't know. And I'm not sure that AI right now right. Is, is trained to do that because it's going from what exists in the knowledge base and, and, and it, it, it's, it's teaching itself on what is already known. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think what we're gonna need, frankly, um, as a community and as a society, is to dare to say what if, what, what can we imagine, dare we imagine, something, another way of existing on this planet. I mean, if we want to just talk about survival mm. for our civilization on this planet, what, what are the other paradigms? You know, so I'm, I'm interested in that, you know, non-human centric paradigms. Mm. So what, what, are, what are those? And I think, um, I mean, it would be interesting for AI to be a collaborative partner in that thought exercise. Right. And maybe, maybe that, that can be part of process. Mm -hmm. But it's always going to take mm. then people who are going to say, I'm interested in that. I believe in that. I want to fund that. I want to support it. I want to pay artists to spend more time on it. And I want to bring it to audience. Right. So AI is not going to do that, right? It, it, it's always going to take um, the artistic process and the delivery system of art is always about giving artists space to take risks, to imagine things that don't exist, and for there to be support in a society that value artists as profits mm. to help us see where we can go. And you know, to me, that's a system we have to invest in that is a corollary to all the investment that's being made in AI. Well, great. Um, this has been fantastic. Unfortunately, we are running out of time. So I'd like to thank you for appearing and thank all of you for coming to Globe Summit. Uh, there's some really great things coming up on this topic, so stick around, please. Thanks so much. Thank you all.